One of these models is, can be used for a population model. Okay, it can be used for a population model. So a population P is changing at a constant percentage rate R each year, then this is the model that you can use. P sub zero is the initial population, whatever you start with, whatever a population of people or a population of bacteria or whatever that population is, but that's the initial is P sub zero. R is expressed as a decimal. I cannot stress that enough. That's the, where the majority of people mess up. And it's not just if it's 1.5%, yes, I realize that's a decimal. But y'all know that when you plug this, when you plug percentages into formulas, you need to convert it by moving the decimal two places to the left. So make sure that you do that when you're using these. And T is typically used high in years. Bless you. Uh, sometimes the percentage rate will say that it's growing that much per month. So in that case, you need to express this exponent in months if they tell you the rate is in months. But right now, we're just going to use the rate per year, so the T must be expressed in years. So if they give you the rate, they say this is the rate per year, and they ask you how much is there after six months, don't put a six in that rate, because that's saying six years. You can just put in 25. Obviously, uh, relating back to what we've already talked about, if that base, if 1 plus R is greater than 1, we're talking about a growing population. If 1 plus R is less than 1, we're talking about a decreasing population. And that's your decay factor. Okay, so let's look at these models here, and let's just decide whether they are exponential growth or decay and find that constant percentage rate of growth or decay. Okay, so that first population there, uh, this was not part of the question, but this is the initial population. So 782,248, that's the initial population. The base is greater than one. So this is growth. Okay, this is growth, but I wanna know, well, what is the growth factor? Okay, so this is growth by, let's figure out the percent. Okay, we subtract that from one, or we subtract one from that. So it's just going to get rid of the one in front. And then we move the decimal two places to the right. So that is growth by 1.35% per year. Because the base is one plus the rate, or one <coughs> minus the rate if it's decay. So um, we've got to get rid of that that one part of it. The base is 1 plus R. I want to know what R is. <clears throat> okay. Similarly, example B, that 1,203,368 is our initial population. This is the K because that base is less than one. So this one, I'm going to rely on my calculator a little bit more. I'm going to do one minus that number, 0.9858, and I'm going to convert that to a percent, 1.42 percent. So K by 1.42 percent. The other one is growth by 1.35 percent. Okay, converting decimal to percent, some of you probably need to write this down, decimal to percent to uh, move two places to the right, percent to decimal to move two places to the left. What's your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's write an exponential function when we are told 
some conditions here. We are told that we have an initial value of 12 that is increasing at a rate of 8% each year. And then we also want to predict the value after five years. So I'm going to write this using function notation. P of T, my population after a certain time T can be found by the initial value is 12. It is increasing at a rate of 8% each year. So that is 0.08 as a decimal. And I'm going to add it to 1 because I'm increasing. And I really don't want that plus in there. I would rather just write it like this. 1 plus 0.08 is 1.08. or I would subtract it from 1. Okay, and to predict the value after 5 years, all we're doing is plugging in 5 in function notation. That would be P of 5. The population at time 5 is 12 times 1.08 to the 5th. And let's cut that using our calculators. 12 times 1.08 to the 5th. So after five years, our population has grown to 17.63, approximately. We don't know what the population is, so we really can't put any units on there. Could be people, could be bacteria, probably not bacteria. Bacteria grows faster than moths, but some type of animal, who knows? Hmm? Really. <laughs> okay, let's talk about a culture of bacteria, actually. A culture of 100 bacteria is put into a petri dish and it doubles every hour. Predict the number of bacteria after three hours. So, let's begin by writing this equation. P of T is equal to the initial amount, 100 times 1 plus the rate. Well, they didn't give us a percentage for the rate. They tell us that it doubles every hour. Well, if something doubles every hour, how could we express that as a percent? Well, be careful. 200% is a little too much. 100% growth would cause the population to double. You have 100% more than, than you previously had. So that's like 100% as a rate, so as a decimal, that is equal to 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So it's, it's very common to have these doubling situations. And every time a population is doubling, you, you know the base is going to be 2. Okay, you know the base is going to be 2. So after 3 hours, P of 3. And I can plug in 3 here because my rate is in hours. So my rate and when I'm plugging in agree, so I can just plug in 3. 2 cubed is 8. Okay, it's not 200 cubed, bless you. Exponents come before multiplication. 2 cubed is 8. Multiply that by 100. Do not multiply the 100 by 2 and cube that. That's going to give you like 8,000. Big difference. Okay, big difference between 800 and 8,000. And we do have units here. We know that those are bacteria. So we're going to have 800 bacteria after three hours. Okay, another common problem that we will run into is radioactive decay or half-life. You've probably talked about this in biology before. Um, so similar to the doubling, if it's a half-life, then your base is going to be one-half. Now, notice that the exponent is a little different. Okay, The exponent is not just t, the exponent is t divided by n. n is the length of your half-life. Now, the reason why there's that part in the equation is because you want to raise the one-half, to the number of half-lives 
that are going to be achieved, so to speak. Okay, so let's see here. What do I mean by that? Um, let's talk about example three here. It says that the half-life is 20 days. We want to know how much is left after five days and after one month. Okay, well, five days is not a whole half-life. Five days is one-fourth of a half-life. So we don't want to raise the one half to the fifth. I would say that it's it's achieving five half lives. It's not. It hasn't even achieved one. It's only achieved a fourth. So that's why the exponent has that little extra piece in it. Um, it just kind of builds that uh, calculation into the formula for you. Okay. Another way of looking at half life or the definition of a half life is how long it takes for half of the material to decay. So you'll run into some word problems later on. Uh, where they may tell you that half of the material is present after 20 years or something like that. So you kind of you need to know what it means to be a half-life. Okay, so let's actually answer example number three there. Let's set up our equation. Okay, P of T is equal to what we start with. We started with five grams. Our base is always one half to the t over n is the length of the half-life. The half-life is 20 days long. So we divide that by 20. We want to know how much is remaining after 5 days. So we want to know p of 5. So 5 divided by 20 is 1 fourth. That's what I was talking about earlier. We're only going for a fourth of that half-life. Um, now, that's also the fourth root, but I don't know what the fourth root of one half is. So I'm going to have to rely on my calculator here. Be careful with your parentheses. Put the one half in parentheses. Put the one fourth in parentheses. Because if you do not, your calculator is going to raise one half to one, the, the power of one, and then divide by four. Okay? So approximately 4.2. That should somewhat make sense. Because if we start with 5 grams after 20 days, how much are we going to have? 2.5. Okay, well, obviously we haven't made it to 20 days yet, so we should have somewhere between 5 and 2.5 and closer to 5, right? Now, after one month, what are we going to plug in for one month? 30. Okay, we're going to assume a month is 30 days. Don't plug in 1, okay, because the units don't agree. Month days, it has to be in days. So we're going to use 30 for a month. Keep it simple. So that's one half to the 3 over 2. Which it should be less than 2.5 because we have gone for an entire half-life, a little bit more than one half-life. It is 1.77. I usually tell you it's around 2. I left off my units. Those are grams. Okay. So make sure that these answers make sense. If you plugged in 1, your answer would not make sense because you would barely get less than 5. But 1 month is longer than 1 half life. So you should have less than half of the original material. Okay. So, actually...